This video is going to be a look at Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith and how they played in Sunday's win over the Texans. First of all, we're really blessed as Ravens fans and, and, and the Ravens team and organization to have two inside linebackers that have such a unique blend of, of speed, power, tackling ability, awareness. Uh, their pre-snap communication, you know, we don't know what they're saying. I could, you know, sometimes I could guess, maybe somewhat educated guess, but their pre-snap communication is just on point. They're on the same page with each other. I never see them, one of them pointing one way and one of them pointing the other way pre-snap, and that's important. I don't know if they do film study together. I would assume they do in their position groups, but sometimes guys get together outside of their position group and do film study together and talk about how they're going to call things, where they'll be lined up, what they'll be looking at, maybe what they each see. Because when you play inside linebacker, you know, the, the position is so unique, if you ask me, compared to all other positions. I guess the only one that's somewhat related to it would be the nickel position in that playing inside linebacker, you ought to be able to come downhill, downhill at angles, side to side, and then also retreat. You're, you're the position asked to kind of be ready, prepared in a, in a body positioning to go forward, right or left, at angles, sideways, or backwards at angles, or directly backwards if it's Tampa 2 and stuff like that, on any play. Now, if it's third and 16, like this pass drop you're going to see from Patrick Queen in the third, I think mid-third quarter, is a beautiful pass drop. I shared it on Twitter. I'm not sure you know how many of you guys are on Twitter, but an amazing pass drop. And it shows these guys don't just have awareness pre-snap, preparedness, like I said, through film study and, and probably group communication about certain things, but Patrick Queen's awareness during the play is off the charts, if you ask me, on this snap, on that third and 16 snap. I'm going to show you, I think, nine plays. I'm going to do something that I, I think I'll try to do more often because I have the list of the plays that I want to look at, like off to the side for me, so I can refer to them and know what's coming up. Um, te technically, we'll start with number two there, I believe, Roquan Smith's sack on a first and 10 um, late third quarter after he had just gotten a penalty on a face mask on the far right sideline, I believe. But I like to give this, show this to people so you can see that, um, first of all, both players have an impact, obviously. Roquan has 16 tackles. I think Queen had 11. Each of them had a sack. Roquan had that sick um, pass deflection on what looked like possibly an RPO force read by uh, Roquan. Patch Queen had the sack on the first possession to end the first possession of the game on the fourth and one. And then Roquan and, and Patrick Queen combined on another fourth and one to, to get a stop later on in the game. Let's get to the film. Let you guys see what I have here. Nine plays, like I said. Stole this name, Bash Brothers, from uh, Frank in our Discord. So I gave him a heads up, at least. But this is the sack. I mean, we're... Ballsy, cover zero, pure cover zero, and blitzing queen off one edge, the right edge on our screen. And then Roquan doesn't look like he's going to blitz. It looks like he's man on the back, and then all of a sudden him and Geno Stone switch it. I thought Stone played well when he came in. Kyle Hamilton looks amazing to me. The The range, the speed is – seems faster than last year. A lot, a lot of guys do. I'm, the Texans certainly are not a slow football team. It's not like, you know, they're slow, so we looked faster. Roquan is so composed pre-snap. It doesn't look like he's panicked at all. It looks like he's absolutely sure of what's getting ready to happen. And you can't, you can't know the play all the time, but he does. He looks like he does, at least. He's so calm here. He's, for a guy who's getting ready to blitz, there's no giveaway at all. I think this is by design for Queen to show early, and then on the side of the back, you see you've got Geno Stone here, so Roquan has got the late blitz that you don't show. Sometimes you show one blitz a little early. Well, this isn't early. This is a late show by Queen. And then no show by Roquan and the burst and the finish. He seems to finish so many tackles with a sling. I don't know if that's what he's been doing his whole career, college included. Forgive me for the, the reverse spot shadow. This is the uh, RPO force. And first of all, if Roquan doesn't knock this pass down, Kyle Hamilton's closing out on this is sick. Uh, it's a beautiful play by Roquan. Kyle Hamilton, actually, I think I think this is where he got hurt. I think he came off the field after this, but just a little sit by the number three. And then the running back 
crossing the quarterback's face, so potentially he could give it uh, absent their O-line scheme. But watch Kyle Hamilton break on this, basically to replace Roquan. So there's a there's some coordination in the call here, and our guys recognizing the formation trips right A, meaning the back is on the side of the trips. There must have been some kind of tendency or tell that the Ravens had information about in terms of how often the Texans did that under Bobby Slowick, the new offensive coordinator. Maybe it's just where he came from and what San Francisco showed before. Let's look at this one from the end zone angle. Smith and Queen remind me of basketball defenders that you just you can't get away from. They're just stuck to you. Like I don't know if you ever played basketball and like handled the ball a lot, but when you handle the ball a lot, you know, people are going to make contact with you. These two guys seem like they'd be horrible to play against because they're going to be making contact with you, hand-checking you, and, and then working off of each other. It's a beautiful play. Fourth and one, first possession, near midfield. I thought the Texans really shot themselves in the foot. As good as their defense played, for large sections of the game, large you know percentage of the game, going for those, th- I think they went for it three times on fourth and short. I could be wrong there, but you got Queen on the stunt, with the hide concept going out in the flats, and I think you've got the second tight end folding, and that's who I believe Stroud t- tries to go to late. Beautiful coordination. Owe getting hands on the tight end, the second guy through. I think that's Schultz. Queen going for the sack. And then Roquan, I think Arch- Adam Archuleta, one of the announcers, covered it very well live, covers up the tight end, which is looks like to me is where Stroud is trying to go with the football now since he didn't have anything out in the flats. Looks like you have multiple options on this play. Give to the running back, potentially. The motion guy going out into the flats, well, he's covered up. Talking about this guy here, he's covered up. The second guy through, it's kind of a Greg Roman type play, covered up by Roquan. And then he could have given it to the back because a triple option concept. Amazing timing by Queen. Ability to finish this out. We had an 11-yard sack by Matabike. Queen's was was 14 yard, was a 14-yard loss, I think. Let me know in the comment section. It's a shame that Oway didn't get a sack as well as he played. We have a ridiculous amount of speed and physicality with some of the guys that we have at the first and second levels. I'm going to include Kyle Hamilton in this, even though he's a safety. And certainly now he's probably, I'm sure he's going to play a lot more deep safety than, than maybe they had planned with, with Marcus Williams being out. Not sure if you saw, but Deron Harmon is a guy who was signed to the practice squad. I think he's got the potential to get on the field. Really experienced football player, brilliant in terms of his intelligence and ability to adjust. Also a Delaware guy from Delaware originally. Actually knows some of his family members, and he um, this is kind of a homecoming for him. I think he's northern part of Delaware, but in any case, look, there's a third and twelve. Roquan's faking the blitz. It's lined up here over the center, and we're just doing this, I think, to try to occupy the center. He's going to peel out of there. Show you two of these plays during this cut up. You can't really screen us with Roquan on the field. Last year, do you remember how he played screens when he came over here? It was We were having trouble with screens before he showed up. And it's like all of a sudden we went from getting gashed by him. Maybe the defensive scheme changed as well after that Bills game uh, particularly. But to being a team that you can't screen, I think a lot of it's got to do with him. Late first quarter, a really nice run fit by Queen. This is one of the things that you heard people say that he – he wasn't, or he couldn't do the shock and shed. He doesn't do those things. I mean, Patrick Queen does whatever is called to do on each play, particularly now. But there's plenty of film, late 2001, of him playing very well, mid to late 2022 of him playing at an extremely high level. He deserves credit. It ain't just, oh, in 2021, they put Josh Bynes next to him, and Bynes fixed his issues. Oh, 2022, they, they, they traded for Roquan. And, that made Patrick Queen look better. I've said this many times, and this is a unique trait, and I don't know what your vocation is or what you love to do in life, but how many people have you met that improve dramatically every season, in the middle of the season? Some guys show up to game one, and that's kind of who they are the rest of the season. Patrick Queen seems to get better as the season develops. This is just one of the things that he's underrated at, He'll take on blocks. 
I did an off season film study on him maybe two months ago at this point. And um, he's willing to knock people in their teeth, even if it, he realizes he's not going to make the tackle. He's also getting ready to, ready to make a check here pre-snap. He being queen. Because of the motion. Kind of a unique motion by, I think, Robert Woods. Short motion outside to the same side. How often do you see that motion? I don't think it's much. But as soon as he begins the motion, queen starts to check into something, and then you see he actually waves it off. I think I don't know if he said anything, what type of mouthpiece he's got in, but he waved it off. This is also one of the plays where Adam Archuleta, who I thought did a pretty good job, I think he kind of mistakenly made it seem like this was an easy throw to, I think it's Collins, in between the top of the numbers and the hash. And from this angle, I would be okay if you said, Coach, I think it was. When you get the end zone angle, man, Roquan's in the window. I don't think that Roquan's going to intercept it necessarily, but look where the receiver is moving. He's moving in this direction. If Stroud was to throw it in a direct line, basically where my two arrows meet, I don't know if that's exactly where the ball will be thrown, Roquan's in the window. He'd have to throw it over him or through him. Well, he's not going to throw it through him. And in order to throw it over him, the window probably could close. I think that that's the reason why Stroud threw that ball there. By the way, you got, I think it's Owe on a late, not not late hit, excuse me, Owe on a QB hit, a somewhat delayed rush because he thinks it's a run concept initially with the tackle stepping down. Big play just shows the athleticism of Owe. And even on in a situation where Roquan or Queen doesn't make the play, they don't make a tackle. They don't get a pass defense. Still, inter- every snap, I think these guys do something interesting. Maybe it's because I love inside linebackers in terms of coaching the position and, and trying to learn more about it. Queen was going to check something and then didn't, waved it off pre-snap. And then Roquan, who seemed to barely move, I think got in the window, window and impacted the play still. For those people who say like inside linebacker position is blank, whatever, undervalued, not important, uh, they're wrong. Look at what we were able to do in Sunday's game and how these guys were able to play and, and get 27 tackles, hold Damian Pierce to 11 carries, uh, 38 yards, I believe. All right, this one, this is really perfect positioning by Queen. You got the back coming out of the backfield, could do a zig route, You know, could run on an out, maybe does a China out, China in, whatever, which is somewhat more rare. But look at the leverage that Queen gets. He's sitting on the inside hip, right exactly where he should be. He doesn't want to hedge too far to the, he being queen, doesn't want to hedge too far to the sideline and then let this guy cross his face in between the top of the numbers and the hash. He has the sideline as a defender, so if this guy breaks to the sideline, you can use the sideline to help you make the tackle. And queen is so good at that, if you ask me, on the back side of trips. It's not really trips because you have the tight end in the backfield too, a joker's uh, set. And then Roquan, if, you, if there's any air under the ball like that, it's just they're, just, they're just too fast. They're too fast. There's a third and seven. Our Roquan's going to drop out. You can see, again, Queen is getting things set coverage-wise to his side. Roquan drops out. Everything's covered. It looks like we're playing quarter, quarter, half to the boundary with the quarters to the boundary. So the, the quarter coverage of the field to the boundary. So that's kind of interesting. But in any case... Roquan and Ardarius Washington, who played well, involved in another tackle with ridiculous hustle by uh, David Ojabo. Third and one, Queen's not involved here, and actually the Texans get the first down on this little in-cut by Robert Woods. But I think this is a moment where Queen is trying to get someone to go cover the tight end out there. I don't believe that Queen is supposed to be out there. I don't on this third and one. Do you? I mean, who do you think should be out there over the tight end? It looks to me like the Texans have two tight ends on the field. And we res- we respond with our base defense, so which means we only have four DBs, two safeties, two corners. Hamilton rolled up, and it's a two-by-two two set. And for whatever reason, we're not moving – this safety over, and nobody's widened up, I think Queen goes and covers the tight end because he notices 
that he's uncovered. That doesn't say great things about our defense, that on a third and one, we end up with an uncovered tight end. But be that as it may, I think this shows you Queen's awareness. You guys let me know what you think. I like to look at the body language of the player in terms of when they're moving somewhere pre-snap. You can kind of tell if if that's what they're supposed to do. To me, that looks like harried um, body position or body movement by Queen, as in, hey, there's nobody covering him. We Someone's got to go do it. I'm going to go do this. Still a first down by the Texans. Maybe some people would say, Coach, that's not really an important play. It doesn't really show me anything about Queen. I think it shows his awareness level, which is why I included it. Fourth and one, they fit off of each other. Roquan lined up at inside backer. Queen on the edge. Tight end's going to motion. Queen tries to set it inside. He actually does set it inside. You'll get the end zone angle a couple of times. Queen doesn't really blow up this, this tight end in motion, but the tight end's in motion. He's got like seven yards to move. He's got a seven-yard head start. Queen does a nice job of setting it inside with the inside shoulder. Roquan folds over the top for the tackle. Another fourth down stop. I think it was three in this game. Maybe it was only two, and I'm, I'm misremembering. But uh, these Queen can do everything. I'm not, I'm not saying he's an edge defender, but I've seen him do this enough now. He's better than he was, remember, in that Bills game last year. Really poor read on the on the boot for a touchdown by Josh Allen it, on a fourth down, I believe, where if Queen plays it correctly, you know, he's got a sack. I think if he's put in that position now, I think he does get a sack. He knows his job. Him and, him and Roquan are on the same page. We've had some great ones, obviously, at inside backer. So many fun guys to watch. Hall of Fame caliber players or, or guys who played at that level for two or three seasons, you know, guys like Bart Scott. These two fit up there as a tandem, if you ask me. If we get this level of play, let me let me add that caveat. If we get this level of play, I'll see, I don't think we can get 27 tackles a game combined between them, but they're going to be asked to do a lot, and I think they're capable of doing a lot. Roquan against the Bengals this week is going to be a huge story because he played so great and so physical in that Week 18 game up there in Cincinnati last year. And then he didn't have as much impact. He did not in the playoff game. And the Bengals had a lot to say about it. Roquan's proud, and he's an amazing football player with an amazing football intellect. And so is Queen. He deserves to be put in the same category in terms of how he processes the game. This is a third and 16. That's one of the best pass drops I've seen. Queen from the line of scrimmage. It's a zone blitz. Ardarius is blitzing off the edge. So three deep, three under coverage. This is exquisite. Queen is going to carry the tight end vertical. And he's opening to the trip side. So the trip side is here. So there's three receivers. So there are some situations where it is advantageous for an inside linebacker to not look at the quarterback. Totally disagree with people who are like, you should have your eyes on the quarterback. All that. That's not true. And in fact, he's not able to make this play if at any time he settles here and turns to look at the quarterback. He's playing the route, which is the whole point of being an inside linebacker. Leverage inside, and somewhere in the next two or three yards, next two or three steps, he's able to get eyes on Robert Woods with this deep in cut dig. Reverse baseball turn, and then follow. Gets his feet underneath of him. Accelerates right here. Is it a pass deflection? I don't know. Should he get a pass deflection? I don't know. Would a slightly better thrown ball have a higher chance of being completed? Sure. It's still a great play. I, I, I totally disagree with people who look at things and say, a better thrown ball, and that's and they use that to minimize a great play by a defender. It's almost like people's brains have been conditioned to make excuses for offensive players and tear down or run down defensive players when they do something that's freaking amazing like this is. That's teaching tape in terms of carrying someone vertical and then not getting too deep and then allowing a route to fit underneath of you. Now, he doesn't care about the backside. When I say the backside, that's the one receiver side over here. Always the dropper here on two. Stone is dropping down on two here. You got your guy in the middle of the field. You're three deep, three under. The guys I just talked about, Owe, Stone, and Queen are the three under. 
and this is teaching tape on reading routes and the situation. If it's second and eight, he's not going to carry it this far because the routes aren't going to go that far generally. It's third and 16, so the dig is designed to get it. I also suspect that an element on this play is film study, preparedness, understanding formations, and that there's three receivers to one side, and then adapting mid-play to do that. There's lots of people, myself included, who could sit there and quote to you tendencies pre-snap. It's easy to do that, watching them on a little screen and talking through a mic like I am now, or it's sometimes easy to do that if you're standing in the, in the stands at a high school football game or at a college game. Watching on TV, it's sometimes easy to do that when you see the replay. Patrick Queen just did it in the middle of a play. As impressive as the entire game was, in all of the plays I showed you, Roquan sack, Queen sack on fourth and one. Their combined fourth and one stop, I think, in the third quarter. Roquan's pass that he batted down at a trips A gun that C.J. Stroud caught and Kyle Hamilton made the tackle on him. This one's the one that, that I like the most. Someone in our Discord said, I've watched that Patrick Queen pass drop like 100 times already. I could, I could watch it 101 times. I mean, it's just, it's exquisite. It's brilliant football from the standpoint of understanding down and distance, understanding routes and how they develop. And, and my suspicion is, again, having some film study where you kind of had an idea of the concept that was coming. Uh, may, maybe I talked up these guys' performance too much. Uh, I don't think you can. I hope we get more games like this and we can all do a, do a, a better job, myself included, of uh, breaking down the plays. But this one was fun as I don't know what for me to make. I, didn't, I don't even know why I, I saved it for last, probably because I was so excited about the way OBJ and Bateman played and then Owe and Ojabo as well. Eventually, I'll get to some Zay Flowers film this week. I'm sure everybody else did Zay Flowers stuff first, but uh, the defense played great, and Patrick Queen, I think, showed evidence that he's leveled up even more from how he played to finish 2022. Guys, let me know if you agree with that statement. Roquan Smith, 16 tackles. It's kind of ho-hum. Like, that's just what the guy does. Uh, these guys are special, and we're really blessed to watch them. I want to save as many Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen plays as possible in 2023 to have for myself to learn for real, to be able to show to you guys in the most, you know, the most succinct way that I can. And then also in case they don't play another season together beyond 2023, which at this point will be a shame because it's a special pairing. Appreciate you guys time. If you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this content, please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it somewhere on social media to help this content get more reach.